Where is that one place you spend most of your time and love decorating? Did you know that beyond being your safe space, your bedroom says a lot about your personality and habits? Your very own choice in selecting decor, furniture, and your organizational habits are telling on you. Who knew, right? Why is your bedroom so special to you? It's where I sleep. It's the only place to get some much needed alone time. Right you are, but it goes deeper than that. Why did Native Americans make pottery with earthy tones and designs based upon plants and animals? Throughout time, people have manifested their identities through objects around them. The same principle applies now as well, for we often pick items for our bedroom that reflect who we are and who we want to be. Your bedroom is an extension of you, keeping you grounded to who you are. In Malcolm Gladwell's bestseller, Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking, he references personality psychologist Samuel Gosling's experiment, which established a link between bedrooms and personality. Gosling's experiment asked total strangers to guess the personality of students just by observing their dorms, and their guesses were more accurate than the ones their close friends made. What? So Gosling used the results to break down the personality revealing aspects of a bedroom into three factors. In this video, we'll be discussing the three factors that specify how your space reflects you. Number one, identity claims. So let's take a look around your room. Is that your favorite book over there? What's covering every other inch of your wall and why? Identity claims are what you are and what you wanna be. It's your attempt in shaping others' opinions of you. These openly reveal chunks of your personality for others to see. You put them out there for a reason and they're doing their job well. They're often items related to your hobbies and interests that you brandish about your room. For example, trophies and medals from playing sports or posters from your favorite franchise all around your room. These show anyone who enters your room, your tastes and preferences. They also say a great deal about you and what your interests are. Your sports trophies show you're an avid athlete. On the other hand, mounds of books and to be read piles all around Say you're a bookworm through and through. By looking at what you've chosen to display around your room, you can get a feel for what you prioritize as the highlights of your life and what you want your life to emulate. Number two, behavioral residue. Do you have to shove things under your bed when people come around? Do you often leave your shoes lying about? What did you do with that fresh pile of laundry you just brought in? Unlike identity claims, behavioral residue is what you unconsciously do with your room. It's all in the little things you do when you aren't paying attention. It could be leaving your dresser open or clothes out on the floor. These small habits say a lot as well. For example, if you leave your dresser open or procrastinate putting away your clothing, you might be someone who is bigger picture oriented. On the other hand, if your room is always neat and tidy, this shows that you're someone who is detail oriented. However, aside from your intuitive habits, Behavioral residue includes unconscious acts that you wouldn't want others to see. In other words, if you took the time to think consciously about them, you wouldn't do them. When people come into your room, you make it as presentable as possible, which often entails putting away clothing and shoving potentially embarrassing things under your bed. You don't want to show people your disorganized room, nor do you want to show them anything you're embarrassed about. Thus, by looking at behavioral residue, you can see what you don't show people and sometimes wish wasn't a part of your life to begin with. Number three, thoughts and feeling regulators. Are you a fan of scented candles? Have you put up any motivational quotes around your study space? All of these can be called your thoughts and feeling regulators. These are the things you put in your room to help your mental health. They could be photos to remind you of happy times or scented candles to uplift your mood. These self-care items reflect how conscious you are of yourself. By having a lot of them around your room, chances are you're well attuned to your emotional needs and what makes you happy. If you don't have them as a staple in your room, you might still be in the process of figuring out your emotional needs and what uplifts you. By looking at what you put around your room to regulate your mood, others can get a sense of the people, places, and activities that you enjoy most. Simply put, your bedroom is your mind's physical home, so it stabilizes, organizes, and embodies your identity. This is the reason why you feel most at home, at home. We hope we were able to give you a little insight into the ways your space defines you. Did you learn anything from your bedroom? Perhaps it was something you've just noticed after inspecting it closely. Feel free to comment down below what your bedroom says about you. 
If you found this video interesting, be sure to hit the like button and share it with others to help them uncover the hidden truths in their rooms. Subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell icon so that you'll get notified whenever we post a new video. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.